Welcome to our lecture online. Our next problem is again one of those problems you will typically not find in any textbook on physics. It's kind of an interesting problem. And you kind of have to think through it again in order to solve it. Now it turns out that if you know the range equation and the time equation and the maximum height equation, you can use those to solve this problem. And matter of fact, we're going to do the problem again using those equations. But what I wanted to do here was simply solve it using the basic equations of kinematics. And again, you will be able to get the same answer. It might take just a little bit longer. So we'll see that it can be, be done this way, and then we'll do it using those other equations on the next video. So let's read the problem. It has to do with projectile motion, and it's a mechanics problem. We're doing method one here. A projectile is fired from horizontal ground with speed v, and projection angle theta. When the acceleration due to gravity is g, the range of the projectile is d. If at the highest point in its trajectory, the projectile enters a different region where the effective acceleration due to gravity is now g divided by 0.81, in other words, it's now a greater acceleration due to gravity, then the new range is d prime, which is n times d, and you're trying to find the value for n. So, Pictorially, this is what would happen. Let's say that we're firing a projectile from, a, um, from the ground at a particular angle, let's call it theta, with some initial velocity v. And of course, normally, you would expect a projectile to do this. But if it is, when it's at its highest point, if it then enters a region where the acceleration to the gravity is stronger, then you would expect the path to go like this. It'll come down faster and it won't go as far. So what they're telling us is that the original distance traveled from there to there, that's going to be d. But now, of course, the second part of the path is going to be shorter. And now this distance from there to there is now going to be n times d. And n, of course, needs to be less than 1 because it's a shorter distance. And we're trying to find that n. So that is what we're trying to find. So, first of all, I need to find how high the projectile will reach on its path. And to do that, I need to know time in the air. So when I calculate time in the air, I use the equation y equals y sub naught plus v sub naught in the y direction times time plus one half g t squared. And of course, in the case of the equation kinematics, that will become a negative 10 meters per second squared. All right. Uh, let's see here. The final height is what we're looking for, but right now we don't know what that is. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to take time in the air for the entire path and then divide it by 2 to get time in the air to its maximum height. That means we had 0 equals 0 plus v initially in the y direction, which is v times the sine of theta times t, and then this would be a minus Let's see here. Do I put in g or do I put in 5? Mm, let me just put in 5. So minus 5 times t squared. So we're going to assume that g is 10 meters per second squared. And in the equation kinematics, we use a negative value. OK, that means when we factor out t, we have 0 is equal to t times v sine theta minus 5t, like this which means that t equals 0, which is at the beginning point, t will be 0, or t will be equal to the ratio of v sine theta divided by 5. So that is the time in the air for the entire path. So time in the air to the top would be half as much. So time to the top would be half this value. So that would be v sine theta divided by 10. So that's how long it will take for the object to reach the maximum height. Now that we know that, now we can figure out how high it will go. So height. And again, we use the same equation as before. We use y equals y sub naught plus v sub naught in the y direction times time plus 1 half g t squared. But now we know what the value of time is, so we can plug that in. The final height, therefore, y is equal to the initial height, which is 0, plus v sine theta times t, 
which is v sine theta, so I can simply square that, so we have v squared sine squared of theta, divided by 10, so that would be v sub naught y times t, and then minus uh, 5, t squared, which is v squared sine squared of theta, divided by 10 squared, which is 100. And of course, this simplifies to 1 and 20. And so finally, we can then say that y is equal to v squared sine squared of theta divided by 20. So that's the maximum height that it reaches. So let's call that h, big H. All right. So now that I'm at that height, the projectile all, all of a sudden enters a region where g is now larger, g divided by 0.81. So it's going to come down faster. So now I need to know how long it will take for the object to fall back down at that speed, starting from this particular height. So then I can write that y is equal to y sub naught plus v sub naught times, uh, v sub naught y direction times time, plus one half the new g t squared. So now what I have is my final height is zero. My initial height is this value right here, v squared sine square of theta divided by 20 plus now the initial velocity in the y direction that's going to be zero because it's starting from the maximum height and then plus well this becomes minus that will be 5 t squared but we have to divide that by 0 0.81 all right so then when we solve this for t uh, because yeah what we have here so then I have t squared is equal to this value right here, which is v squared sine square of theta divided by 20. And then I have to multiply times 0 0.81 and divide by 5. So 5 times 20, that changes to 100. And now I'll take the square root of both sides. So when I come up here, I can write that the time to come back down is going to be equal to the square root of this, which is v sine of theta divided by 10 and times 0 0.9, because that's the square root, that's the square root of 0.81. So this is, let's call it T2, and let's call this one T1. We're going to change this to T1. That's the time to reach the top and that's the time to come back down. Now what's the ratio of that time? How much less time does it take to come back down? So the ratio of T2 to T1 is equal to V sine theta times 0 0.9 divided by 10 divided by T1 which is V sine theta divided by 10. And notice that all this cancels out and we see that the ratio time 2 divided by time 1 is equal to 0 0.9. So it takes only 90% as much time to come back down as it is to get to the maximum height. And so then the total distance equals the distance traveled to the halfway point, which is half a d, and I should write d prime because that's now the new distance, plus now the forward velocity is still going to be the same, but now we have to take that on less time, only 0.9 seconds or 0.9 of the original time, not seconds, but 0.9 of the original time. And so we then write, um, oh, this would be half d plus 0 0.9 times half d. If the time had been the same, it would have been half d plus half d, but now it's only 9 tenths of the time for the second half of the trip. And so d prime is now equal to 0 0.5 d plus 0 0.5 times 0 0.9 would be 0 0.45 d which is equal to 0.95d. So we see that the new distance is 0.95, the original distance. And since we're looking for the, the number times d, the number is of course 0.95, which means that n equals 0.95. And that is how you solve the problem using the rudimentary equations of kinematics, the three equations of kinematics, and primarily we're using this first equation right here which describes the position as a function of time. So again, the way we did this is we wanted to find time in the air to get to the maximum height, but since we don't know the maximum height, we took time in the air for the entire trip. If the g doesn't change, 
The time in the air is, is found by this equation. We found it to be v sine theta over 5, but since we only want half the time, divide by 2, we get v sine theta divided by 10. That's the time in the air. Then we figure out how high it went by using the same equation, but now we plug in the v initial and the time that we got from the first part of the problem. And so now we calculate how high the projectile went. Now for the second part of the problem where the gravity is greater, we now want to find the time in the air uh, using the new g. And the new g will be the old g divided by 0.81. And so therefore we plug in the values again and now we get a new time, the second time, the time for the object to come back down. So I actually I should write time in air right here. And I'll write time 2 in air, the time that it took to come back down. So once we have the time that, to come back down, we then take the ratio, the time to come back down to the time that, to go up, and we found that it's 0.9. It only took 90% as much time to come back down as it is to go up, and then we take 90% of the distance covered in the first half to say the distance for the second half because it took faster to get back down to the ground, add those together, it's 0.95d, so n is 0.95, and that's the number we're looking for. That's using the rudimentary equation of kinematics. On the next video, we'll do the same problem, but now we use those generally derived equations for range, height, and time in the air to see if we could do it faster if we remember those three equations. We'll show you how to do it that way.